You took your drain out? This oh. is so dangerous, Janice. Oh my God, well, I'm sorry, so sue me. Hello, beautifuls. Welcome back to my Chanel. Uh, I am currently uh, suffering with the plague and I've been going through a few waves, unfortunately. I thought today I feel like I'm most up for filming because I haven't been in the studio for a little while. Mm. But I do feel like if I was in Victorian England that I would simply have to write a letter that goes, my dearest Engelbert, I fear the winter may take me. I bequeath to you my illustrious collection of pheasant quills. She's dead. So I have absolutely no idea what you're gonna be in store for today, my lovelies. Mr. Biscuits is currently patrolling the area, as you can see. I don't really want to have him on my lap because it's not very nice being all like, mm -hmm. Look at you, you're so pretty. So my lovelies, welcome back. It's been a little while since I've sat down and filmed and I'm so glad that the content, the new content for the new year is doing so well. You guys are loving this amalgamation of wedding and shock TV. So let me tell you my loves, we're gonna start another series here on the Chanel today. I'm so happy. Taking it all the way back to what I am specifically known for here on the Chanel, and that is plastic surgery TV shows. This is quite possibly the most famous like plastic TV surgery show ever? Feel free to debate that with me in the comments, actually. Today we're going to be watching Botched. I am basically going to guess that most of you who've watched like reality TV or anything to do with like plastic surgery shows or any of the such like and all that will probably already know what Botched is. But for those of you who don't know what Botched is, let me tell you. Let me help you. Botched is a TV show that started in 2014, which is actually a bit bizarre because I swear I remember it being older than that, but maybe not. Botched is an American reality TV series that premiered on the channel E. E Entertainment, there we go again. I mean, one of the doctors in this show, Dr. Dubrowlift, was in fact part of Bridalplasty, which I think was also made by E. Put a pin in that, we'll talk about that later. It follows Dr. Terry Dubrow and Paul Nassif as they remedy extreme plastic surgeries gone wrong. Now, I don't know if any of you guys out there have had any experience with being botched. Luckily, I've not had any experience with my plastic surgery being botched. However, I have had botched lip filler before in which there was just like a full bead just put here and I was like lumpy for a long time until I got them dissolved and refilled and now they're all gorgeous. It can happen to anyone at any time. You can even go to the best doctors in the entire world and they might just have an off day. In fact, I remember even reading a scientific paper once that covered the concept of like surgeries on a Friday afternoon were like more likely to go wrong or have to have revisions than surgeries performed on a Monday morning. So there you go. But getting back to Botched, my lovely, yes, it features Dr. Dubrow. Time for a brow lift. Oh. Now, Dr. Dubrow, we have seen multiple different times here on the Chanel. First of all, we saw him on The Swan. Then we saw him on Bridal Plastic. And I'm pretty sure we've also seen him on Extreme Makeover. That might be a lie. I'm not entirely sure. What I'm trying to say is, if there is a Hollywood TV show that features plastic surgeons, it's probably going to have Dr. Dubrow lift involved. Now, I am of the opinion that you cannot ethically operate on people under a reality TV show vibe. I do wonder if maybe he joined the idea of Botched, helping remedy people with extreme plastic surgeries gone wrong, as a way to sort of atone for his part in The Swan, which if you don't know, at one point he oversaw 21 plastic surgery operations on a single patient under the guise of making it to a beauty pageant competing against all the other contestants who'd also had just as much cosmetic surgery to be crowned The Swan. Wasn't that just a dark time here on the Chanel, my lovelies? With that being said, I'm not gonna waffle too much today, my lovelies. I could quite go for a waffle though. I feel like I'm, I'm, I need a lot of sugar. I have taken enough aspirin today, my lovelies, that there is a potential I may just cross the veil at any moment. I fear the winter may take me. So I do bequeath my peasant quills to you. Get yourself a beverage. I am on the caffeine because I really need to be alive and kicking at this point in time. Pop your little Ochinger right into your little botched hole. Uh, <laughs> oh no, we can't call it that. Is that allowed? Oh. Oh, you are not say? And let's watch Botched Girls. Don't tell me what to do. Have you ever noticed that when you're sick, just like nonsense just gathers near you? Just like filigrees and bijou nonsenses. Oh, God. No. I don't, have I ever seen this? I don't remember this intro. I have watched Botched, surely. Oh, this is very like high fashion woman. Fa oh, dear. 
That was very MySpace music, wasn't it? I wanna be perfect. Eyelashes, I'm gonna cut you. Eyelashes. Like that was just MySpace music, wasn't it? I'm Janice Dickinson. Oh, I am well, look who the f is that? <laughs> look what the f in pheasant dragged in by its hindquarters. Janice Dickinson. Of course she I is. am the world's first supermodel. No. I did French Vogue, Italian Vogue, no, you aren't. Mexican Vogue, Vogue, Vogue. You know, you name it, I've been on the cover of every magazine in every world for every season. Every world. I am I no stranger so. to plastic surgery. Mm. I've had a facelift, a brow lift, tummy tuck, a brow and lift. Shoulders. I'm perfect, except for my. <laughs> when I was reigning as a supermodel, I had very small A's, and designers love that. I was 32 when I had my first implants. They didn't feel like breasts. They felt wooden. One went in one. A wooden breast implant? Oh no. I don't want that. I want to say, weirdly enough though, I was 33 when I had my boobs done. <laughs> what was I even talking about? Why did I bring this up? I don't have wooden breast implants. Ah! <laughs> direction and one went in the other direction. But I was happy. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Yeah, she says she's the world's first supermodel, but we have never had, she's never done a runway ever. There's no footage of her doing a runway campaign ever. But she is right. Designers do like a small, supple breast. Because my breasts finally fit into a brassiere. A I brassiere. wanted to have softer breasts. So I went from saline to silicone. Sylvester Stallone paid for those, so I figured, why not? Free I'm in. After the second surgery- Oh my goodness. Oh, Janice's boobies. Oh, okay. Um, all right, okay. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you any of all this, but underneath Janice's name here, it says Ripple's nipples. So I imagine she's got some botchery happening on the breasts, perhaps? I started to get ridges. It was like canyon ripples. I did American Idol. And I wore something extremely low cut, and I got dogged the next day globally because they zoomed in on my breast, and you saw the ridges and the ripples. I should have worn a wetsuit. Hi. Hi. Okay, I will say the press is particularly disgusting about people, shall we say. Body shaming in order to sell newspapers across the world. An awful idea for anyone involved, actually. Is that tea? I'm actually interested to learn a little bit more about this because one of the reasons originally that I was going to go for saline implants was because there's less like overall risk long term rather than silicone if they rupture. But you can get rippling with saline that you don't necessarily get with silicone. So what's the tea, Jack? Oh. Hi, I'm Janice Dickinson. Amanda. Of course you are. How do you do? Good. Nice to meet My you. My friend Steven. Hi. Hello, nice very nice to meet you. Hello, Hello Steven. We have several outfits that we need for Fashion Week in New York, Fashion Week in Paris. But the thing of it is, is that I have tricky breasts. When I stand in. Wait a minute. The idea that she's just walked into this shop, I don't think she has. Because if you look back where she came in from, she like came in from. The bins! From like this like exit stage right here. It's like the changing rooms or something like that. Bins! So they're pretending that like, oh, she's come in the shop here, yes. No, because we can see, we can see the reflection here that. There is actually an outside, and she didn't come in from the outside. She just sort of walked in from the changing room. So what are they trying to sell us here? That Janice is a fashion icon seen around the world. She needs an outfit for New York Fashion Week. Oh my goodness, breasts. Mummy's got breasts. For Fashion Week in New York, Fashion Week And I will also Paris. not be paying you. But the thing of it is, is that I have tricky breasts. When I stand in front of the mirror naked, I always see the ridges. We have full racks here so, for you. I'm gonna have a full rack after I get my boobies done. Okay, she's very blunt, isn't she? People critique it, they write about it in fashion magazines, they talk about it on Fashion Police, they talk about it everywhere. Yes. Oh uh, my God. Does Fashion Police still exist anymore? I know that was like, uh, Joan, was it Joan Rivers? Joan Rivers' is particularly problematic TV show about fashion? Mm. Gee. Right, what's this? I was the original model when Johnny Versace first designed the metal dress back in 1978. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh, I know, I love Versace, <laughs> may you rest in peace. I don't want rock star Anyone who says, oh my gosh, that's amazing, whilst you're telling them information, has no interest. I wanted them to look appropriate Ooh. for a woman my age. I'm ah! just, gonna, just like, oh, oh, yeah, I know, yeah. I know, but you know, I can't walk around a home my, my breasts like that all day long. No. Hopefully, with the help of Dr. Debro, I can have my wishes and dreams come true. Because if he does, I'll f his I'm, what? Because if he does, I'll f his Fallopian tubes on display. Right. 
was this old fashioned place on the game? She's on the beach, she's on the go. This is Janice's a bit consultation. Different. Do you know who Janice Dickinson is? Oh, right, of course. Goes. First supermodel. Oh, yeah, no, she's right. already actually had a good amount of work done. Well, Hi, hello. Janice. Wow. Janice Stephen, which is which? I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. Janice. Hi. How are you? <laughs> As if she doesn't know who Dr. Debra is. I've heard so many great things you? about nice you guys. You. Really? I'd yes. like to hear that. Please have oh. a seat. Yay. Hopefully, you can help me with my breast. What bothers you most about your breast? Yes. My silicone breasts have been in there for about 30 years. <gasps> yes. When you get your breast, you are meant to have them replaced every 10 years. Done. You're really supposed to have them replaced every sort of 10 to 15 years. Yes, see, oh my God, am I going to be agreeing with Dr. Dubrow throughout this series? Because if that's a new development here on the Chanel, my lovelies, I just don't know what's real anymore. It'd be like me going with Tyra Banks and being like, yes, this is exactly what is needed in the modeling industry. That are more than 13 years old have an 83% chance of being ruptured. Oh, These goodness. implants being from the 70s, who knows? We may take them out, put them on there, and there might be streaks of cocaine still left on them. I feel like that there are the woman was too stunned to speak is is that appropriate is that appropriate i don't think that's a is that appropriate i don't think that's appropriate i feel like that there are particles that are rolling around that like the size of edamame the good news is you were done the old-fashioned way edamame. which is to put those old stop saying old those <laughs> Um, Antiqu antiquated or, or antiquated. You had the other silicone implants put in on top of the muscle. That was the old. Fa that was the other way that was done previously. Theoretically, uh, we would take those implants out and then lift up your pectoralis major muscle, yes. peeling it off the ribs. Yes. <laughs> and then lining the inside of the breast pocket with them so that the new implants go under the muscle. What? Which is the correct way. Well, there is no 100% correct way, realistically. If you're having smooth silicone implants, they tend to go underneath the muscle because that actually helps prevent rippling. And it also creates like a more natural, fuller effect. However, if you have textured implants, which are kind of under debate whether they should be used, Usually the textured implants are placed on top of the muscle, but they don't drop and fluff, which is the concept of like becoming more sort of like softer and beautiful over time. They stay very rounded and basically where you plonk them. I'll be under anesthesia, right? Yeah, of course I you don't will. take narcotics, but uh... You don't take any narcotics? Well, I'm gonna have to take narcotics for this, but you know, I'm, I'm sober. I have had drug and alcohol issues in the past. I'm nervous about doing this operation sober okay. without taking pills to calm my nerves and my anxiety. Yeah. So okay. there's like, you know, okay. I, I'll go to a recovery center and uh, that'll be good. It'll be good. <laughs> we'll just uh, work within my program of uh, finding the easiest, softest way uh, we can go through this operation. Okay, let me ask you a serious question. Do you have any supermodel friends for Paul? Yes, we do. I'm uh, looking for you. Know, do you have any supermodels uh, this help? woman knows? Let's, let's, let's do that stuff later on. We hook you up, you'll hook you know, Dr. Paul Nassif, I'm quite enjoying him so far. He seems to be very like, yes, let's keep this business, let's keep this work, let's keep it professional, girls. Dr. Dubrow does have this air of like, laddishness about him, if that makes sense. Like a little bit like, rapscallion. I don't know. Does that make sense? Do you get that vibe? Hook him up. I'm doing fine. We know plenty of available women. Too bad. I'm engaged, otherwise I would have hit on you. <laughs> well, then but he could not, but then he couldn't operate on you. I do think oh. Paul could date a model, but if she could see, hear, smell, or has any kind of reasonable personality, I doubt it. Oh, dear. I've dated numerous models. Let's go in the other room and have a look. Okay? And that told you, didn't it? Okay. Right into the other room. Come on, Janice girl. She's in the right gown there. Perfect. Okay, so show us what's going on. Okay. See the ripples? Oh, yeah. See the ridges? This is the... I don't know how much of this section I'm going to be able to show on YouTube, but I'm just going to, like, unmask the area that she's actually talking about. So you can see some very slight rippling on the top of the breast, which is something that can happen if you have an implant over the top of the muscle. Interestingly enough, what you can do nowadays, if this is still a thing, is you can go for a form of fat transfer in order to, like, fill those ripples in slightly. This is the actual implant. As you know, these are the ridges in the implant. R really? Yeah. The skin's getting a little thin. The skin is getting very thin. My skin and is your, thin. And your implants are almost touching in the middle. Janice's breasts have a lot of problems. She's 
been in need of breast surgery for probably two decades now. Oh, the damn. implant pockets are sharing a space and you have what's called simastia or called bread loafing, where it's like a bread loaf in the center. Like bread loafing? A bread loaf in the center? This is quite dramatic language we're hearing today, my lovelies. You can feel like deposits floating around. There's like a yeah. like an edamame. It's edamame, Janice. Edamame. I agree. Let me tell you what the options are. Ready? Number one, we can take cadaver skin and sew the inside. No cadaver skin! No. A cadaver is a dead body. A dead body. No dead bones of ghosts. No serial killer of ladies that have been in jail. No. The no, other so option is to make the incisions underneath the areola, the way you have those. Yeah. OK, go in the same opening. Take the implants out. Lift up the muscle on each side. Extremely painful. Elephant on your chest kind of recovery. I don't want an elephant on my chest. I know, but that's oh, what it's going to feel like. like. That? Why did he say it was going to be extremely painful? That's not a very good uh, bedside manner. I wouldn't say that my breast implants were extremely painful. I would say it's more uncomfortable because you can't actually really like lift your arms up very much because all of this area is like tight and doesn't like want any give at all or any disruption. So anything that's like above desk height, immediately unreachable post-surgery. She's had some problems that she admitted to with narcotics in the past, so I'm not sure how we're gonna get control of her pain post-operatively. Putting the implants under. Yes, actually, this is a very good point. I have people in my life that are in recovery, and I'm actually glad they're talking about this because it can be very, not difficult, very different. I think the word is different. For people who are on a sobriety journey or a recovery journey, there's always going to be different approaches needed to post-op care. I mean, you can't really not ever take like anesthetic and morphine when it comes to actual surgery. But care really needs to be taken with what is considered like post-op medicine. The muscle will do two great things for us. One, it should get rid of, if not all, most of the rippling, number one. Number two, it'll separate the mounds. Yes. And stop you from having that sin masty, that bread loafing. The question for Janice will be, can I fit the same size implants under her muscle? And she wakes up with smaller breasts with a more normal breast shape, is she gonna be happy? Only time will tell. That's this true, actually. Above the muscle does tend to look a little bit more like, ah, uh, pussy palm star. I must admit, I do like looking at, that sounds a bit odd way for me to start that sentence. I do like the look of, should I say, uh, breasts that are like pushed up and together, but I wouldn't want mine to look like that all the time. I want the choice to be able to hoik them up into place and look the power if I want to, but also have them very natural and neutral looking. I think Janice is one of these people that likes quite a shocking and striking look. Unsure whether she'll like the more natural look, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Won't we, lovely? Yes! This is the operation of choice. Sounds like a plan. Right, These okay, so she's up for are, it. Forgive me. Don't say old. Ancient. I need them out. Yeah, you need them out. Yeah, we can't be having 30-year-old technology in our bodies. Oh, I was born in China. Hello! I was abandoned. What a fashion icon, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 who's this lady? Right, okay, everybody listen. My name is Cheryl. Cheryl. I was born in China. I was abandoned when I was uh, three or four years old. I always had this insecurity issue because abandonment makes you feel like you're not wanted no matter where you go. I was this has gone dark. 13 years old. When I came to the United States, I was intrigued by the fact that uh, everybody seemed so rich. <laughs> well, because maybe because I was poor. The beauty of it's the magazines, that you, you're you, so obsessed it? with all these images, and you go, oh, I want to be like that. I got to be something that's totally different. I was about 19 years old when I had my eyes done to look more Caucasian by removing the fat on top and the bottom and creating folds on my eyelids so they could be big and wide. Bring a basket. Oh, wow. Get the basket. Oh, that's kind of sad. There is something that's really quite, um, I don't know what the word is here. It's not like upsetting because it was her choice. Maybe at 19, you might still be struggling with some insecurities, especially if the trauma of being abandoned is still very present in your mind. But removing like heritage I don't know how else to say it, like genetic phenotype heritage points. 
are really quite sad to fit into an ideal of a culture's beauty that isn't necessarily from one that you were born into. I feel like that's so, it's a very delicate subject and I realize it's probably, we're probably not gonna be able to quite understand all of the nuance here on today's video because we've also got Janice going, titties girl, titties! Whilst we're trying to have, you know, a sensible conversation about maybe what forms of cosmetic surgery should be like allowed, for lack of a better word. It does fill me with a little bit of like sadness is the word melancholy maybe? It's not quite sadness, that's not the real word that I want to find, but it's a bit like, oh that's, I, I feel quite, insert word here, about the fact that you felt you had to do that, you know? That's, I'm a bit like, oh. You're my henchman now, don't you forget. You what, wanna henchman? learn What's Chinese? That? Chickpeas? Yeah, she'll teach me Chinese. Xianyuan, Xianyuan. Mm. What is that? Let me taste one. Scallops. One day, Ooh. I thought, Lobsters! Well, gee, <laughs> people are not buying this that I'm telling them that I'm European. It's clear as daylight to leave all my Chinese roots behind. What kind of wishful thinking? You oh. can never ever uh, change who you are. Jellyfish, just a... I agree, I agree. I think it's not necessarily about changing who you are, it's embracing the journey that you're on. So as a trans person, I very much, there's like a nuance to this conversation that is not lost on me, like an irony of me saying like, oh, it's a shame that you couldn't feel connected with who you were born as. Like it is, the, the irony there is not lost on me, but it is not about what you are born as. But I solely believe that the reason why we're here on the planet is not because of who we're born as, it's who we leave here as. And a life well lived for happiness will always, always triumph over suffering because of your unhappiness. I freaking just want my eyes back. Perfect. Perfect. Gorgeous. Money. Success. Fame. You're getting caught. Glamour. You're getting fixed. To be honest with you guys, I'm really nervous oh, about it. Oh, she is. He said under the muscle. That would be like lifting up like your balls oh, yeah, yeah, and sticking yeah, yeah. something inside and then sewing your balls back on. This Janice, an under pectoral muscle implant for boobs is not quite the same as lifting up your balls and putting something underneath and stitching it up. No, I'm sorry, it's not the same. This will be the first time I'm having an operation without medding myself out because I'm sober. Before, I took anti-anxiety pills like crazy and it didn't, and nothing affected me. But it's but you're gonna be fine. You're gonna like take the meds as prescribed. <laughs> I know exactly. But as prescribed. <laughs> right, right. No, right. I don't do that because Rocky won't let me. Ah, speaking of the devil. Tony, how are Hello, you? Hello, Angel. Rocky. Well, lovely to see you, Rocky. Mr. Rocky, hello. I will. Now you have lipstick everywhere. You work too hard. Your girl's been very nervous all day. We're trying to calm her down. I'm feeling sober feelings. As I did not know that this was Janice's husband. Did you? Is she still married to Mr. Rocky? Is she? I just don't know. She is still married to him. Okay, Robert Rocky. Normal feelings. Pop the pills. Normal you know. anxiety. Normal anxiety, doctor. It'll be okay, I'll be right there. I was really glad yes. to hear that Janice was anxious. I think what's actually very interesting to hear about somebody on a journey like this on a TV show, although I think Janice has her, should we say, TV problematic moments. A lot of them we've seen here on the Chanel already. It is quite nice to see someone talk so openly about their experience in recovery because it always is a bit tainted. But I think it's actually very important to remember that anxiety around a surgery is completely normal. It's completely normal to feel a sense of anxiety around something as life-changing as going under the knife. The phrase routine operations exists, but every time you go under anesthetic, there's always risks associated with that. And I think anxiety and risk are, is an acceptable pairing. Anxiety when there is no risk to something is where things start to become untangled. I myself have an anxiety disorder and over the last 10 years or so, I think I've managed to kind of get to grips with it. That's not necessarily gonna be forever, but that's certainly how I feel right now. And I'm also on a sober journey too. So I do have some extension of empathy here for Janice Dickinson, which is surprising because on every other show, she's just completely 
heinous. Because she was sober and could could feel her real feelings. It's about mm. growing gracefully. Make them healthy and beautiful yes. and perfect. The gays love my breasts. True. That's personality, honey. Mm. That's not breasts. And it's the fact that you have breasts that makes you interesting. Steven, yes. I'm giving you the old implant. Well, I'm going to put them on eBay. <laughs> I love Janice the way she is. I could see she's been bothered. I really am looking forward to her feeling more comfortable with her appearance and her body. What if no one hires he me again? He sounds quite lovely, he will. actually. What if Rocky won't love me anymore? Of course he will. What if the dog won't play ball with me? <laughs> oh, is that the same you know, dog we've seen now. in the previous episodes of Janice Dixon's Modeling Agency, girls? Perfection! Cheryl, go! Hey, oh, goodness me. I'm here for the Hello. doctor. Oh, great. You can sign in. Okay, finally. <laughs> a bubbly ball yeah. of energy. I would probably just open my wallet and, and just ask them if they can make me Chinese again. Cheryl, how are you? Wow. Oh, so she's coming Both in for a reversal. Wow. I'm, I don't know what to do. Uh, oh, she's you holding you her hands out. Tearing your own. Great top, by you know, the way. You know, well, yeah, she's wearing a, let it all hang out a little bit. You're dressed like Daisy Duke from the Dukes of Hazzard. Okay. You're very pretty. Your face looks really good. What? possibly could you want from us? Are you kidding me? My face look <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know. Is you had a... westernization of the upper eyelids. Now I look like monkey's butt. No, monkey's butt. The most popular plastic. I wouldn't say she quite looks like that. I do, however, feel like before plastic surgery, well, before I had any plastic surgery, before I'm allowed to even think about any trans surgeries, I have to have therapy. And I have to prove that I'm trans. And when I first began my transition, I had to go through something called RLE with therapy. RLE is real life experience, girls. I had to live in my new assigned role in society before I was allowed on HRT or to even pursue like transition medically from a medical standpoint. With that came lots of therapy, lots of questions, lots of doctor's appointments. And I do feel like, while I don't agree with medical gatekeeping, I do absolutely agree that therapy should be the first port of call for something like this. If you're gonna go on a TV show, I feel like there should be a caveat somewhere to be like, and during this show, you must also have therapy that will not be televised because we saw televised therapy on The Swan. And I did think that that was very, Unethical? Surgery procedure in most Asian cultures is conversion to a westernized or Americanized eye. It's theoretically, technically possible, maybe, to do a reversal, but until I examine her, I don't really know yeah. what the solution's going to be. Oh, I said, I do wonder. I would have thought that maybe she might have gone to a revision specialist, perhaps even maybe a Chinese surgical specialist, in order to seek something like this, perhaps? I don't know. Interesting. I guess we just have to learn more. Let's get the extra large, so might as well go big. That's what I figure, you know, go big. <laughs> Everything go big. So this way I figure, well, increases my chance of getting a boyfriend. Or, okay, or so you had that surgery. Getting laid. <laughs> yes. So... Never get plastic surgery for a man. <laughs> never, 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 never. Yes. You know the Asian eyelid typically goes up like this, yeah, and yeah, the no. western eye, eye goes more right, at this right, level? Right, right. Do you think... Yours goes too high or mm -hmm. too low? Well, my uh, speculation is oh, my is too low. Yours is too low. So yeah. yours is so too you want to have this go way. up more. You want it to go up more like this. Correct. Really? Have you had anything put in your cheeks? Filler, implant, yeah. anything? So what's interesting is that when you go for any sort of plastic surgery on the face, they always say to you, don't wear any makeup. Do not wear any makeup. Let's say I was going to go in for a cantharplasty, which is where they change the angle of your eye through surgical incisions on the eyelid. If I was to go in with makeup like this, which artificially gives the look of my eye being already swept up, a surgeon's going to see this and be like, oh, well, obviously we're not going to do any of all that because your eye already does that. So I am interested as to why she's allowed to come to this consultation with such dramatic eye makeup on because from my like makeup artist opinion I'm not a surgeon I am a scientist however it already looks like she has quite an upswing eye effect and they're saying and she's saying she wants it even more dramatic so if she was to take off her eyeliner we might see a bit more of like a true to life situation should I say I have been momentarily joined by a Mr. Biscuit are you a good boy you've been a very good nurse nurse Biscuit looking after sickly mummy maybe don't freaking prosecute me for this 
uh, I bought some black market, um, you know, fillers from China. They were really cheap, and then. All right. So I just stuck it in there, and then, you know. You did that yourself. You practiced medicine on yourself. Uh, well, do not, do not call me. Go shh, and release. And you're done. <laughs> I just Don't do I your put, own fillers. I put in as much as uh, whatever that hundred dollar can buy me. There's a lot of dangers with injecting yourself with some unknown product from China. You can get Do not, do not, my loves, do not buy unregulated filler online, purchase it, and then put it in your face. Don't do that. Your body deserves so much more respect than that. That's scary. And also where I think therapy should come in first. Get infected. You could have some horrible allergic reaction. It could actually hurt the blood supply to the area that it was injected. Yes, and necrosis, cause skin girl. To be black. Vascular occlusion. Why don't we go in the exam room and take a really close look at you, okay? Put me out first. Give me lots of vodka first. Oh my goodness. Fair right, enough. Let's go. Let's, let's go. go. Take oh, she's quite a character, isn't she? Is out of her mind. Botched girl. Oh, the highway girl, she's so you on the go. you want to undo the Americanization of your eyes. Yes, so you went from you. Chinese to American, now you want to go back to Chinese. You ever heard of saying that the leopard cannot remove his spot? And that's me, I, if I'm a leopard, I'm... You want your spots back. Well, I can because they took the stupid things off, so you gotta help me. Close them. How, yeah, how'd you... Okay, right, there's her incision on the way up here. Yeah. And they can take out all the fat there. I mean, that's a, and her epicanthal foam is gone. I mean, you'd have to put fat right, or a filler right inside there. Filler? To cause that fullness and drop the whole area down to cover the eyelid. Yeah, I mean, there's a special muscle in the eyelid called the levator muscle. Mm -hmm. Elevates the eyelid. Right. We could, theoretically, detach it and okay. reinsert it lower to give you that lower insertion point that Asian eyelids have. Okay. But here's the issue. It's hard to reverse that. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Yeah, it would take very little to make it so you could never close your eyes again. What do you mean very little? Any little bit of swelling or scarring after any further eyelid surgery, you would never be able to close your eyes again. Yeah, that I, I, like for me, that's not a good enough risk. You know what I mean? Like that's not, that doesn't sound like, oh yeah, maybe I'll take that risk. No. However, I am very intrigued there that we heard the word filler. They could strategically place filler to kind of weigh the area down slightly. That should be something that's investigated first before surgery, in my opinion. Always take a more temporary reversible route before committing to something permanent and irreversible. My opinion. Are you just trying to scare me? me I'm telling like you the that? truth. You'd sleep with your eyes open, you'd always have irritated eyes. I'll take the chance. It's... I'll sign the waiver, whatever. Oh, it just yeah. doesn't work that way. Well, yeah. well, how about $500? $550, maybe. No. We specialize in is fixing disfigured or botched surgery. Yours is not botched. Yours is excellent. She should leave well enough alone because she can get into big trouble. You okay. broke my heart. Sorry. But safety first. I guess I can't argue with that. Yeah. Have a nice day. Well, that's not what I wanted, you know. I know. But, yeah, any one of you guys available, give me a call. Well, he might be, but I'll talk to him about it. Oh, okay, what do you do? Bye! Bye. Really? Oh, what an awkward situation that was. However, it is interesting to see doctors say, actually, we're not going to do that, you know? We're not going to further any complications, should we say. We see a lot of, like, plastic surgery dolls here on the internet, shall we say, especially on Instagram and on TikTok, where quite often we ask ourselves, how did this surgeon think it was okay to perform this procedure? And quite often medical tourism comes into that, like quite often these people will visit countries that perhaps have less regulation with their surgeons, or perhaps have less scrupulous reputation, should we say. So it is fascinating to watch someone actually say, no, we're not gonna do that. However, he did use the word filler, so I'm surprised that they didn't say, we're not gonna operate, but these are other avenues that you could investigate. Unfortunately, Cheryl has taken things into her own hands beforehand, and I feel like she maybe might do with this situation, unless presented with something that's the most safest option for her. Do you know what I mean? When some people get a bee in their bonnet, that bee is never gone. My pet beehive. I just don't think she's a candidate for a haircut. You should date her. Uh, I could see that happening. But it's okay. I'm fine that way. You I'm dated crazier so girls than that. Isn't he? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> Don't call her crazy. She's just of a delicate disposition.
Right, come on, Janice, go. Janice? Hi. Hi, my name is Ozzy. I'm going to be your nurse Hi, Ozzie, today. How are you? Hello, how are you? Nurse awesome. Lady Ozzy. I can take yes. you back. Thank you. You're going to be fine. I know. We're going to take good care of you. Come I know. On, Thank you. Bye, Rocky. Oh, it is quite a lot going wow. into surgery. I remember when I had my breasts done, my boyfriend took me to my surgery and I was like, I love you, oh, just in case I don't make it, I love you. It is quite stressful, you know. There is, it's really anxiety inducing. Oh, she's got a f I'm me a bob. little scared. It's an enormous challenge to manage someone's post-operative pain who has a history of narcotic addiction. So we may be yes. in for a real wild ride with her. Yes. Can, we, can I please have some Valium right now? I'm nervous, here, here. I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. You have to watch her very closely because she will either be very resistant to pain medication and want a lot more, or she won't want to take any at all and will be in a great deal of pain. While you're at it, do, do something to my vag. I like Janice. Cancelled. She doesn't give you exactly an accurate history. She's the a other challenge loose will be of. managing her post-operative pain. Anything you feel like having? Cocktail wise. I'm in AA. Of course, I don't want a cocktail. I'm anxious. I'm nervous. I don't really know what to expect about the breast pain What's that I may happen? be feeling. Yeah, well, we could, this, wait, are we going to watch Janice in surgery now? Prescribed. That's when addiction kicks in. Do it. All right. Start thinking of a nice place to go on a little vacation. Happy, happy thoughts. Bora Bora, girls. For Janice's surgery, right. we're first going to remove her old implant. Yes. Then we'll remove the masses from the right breast for further testing. And yes, I'll finish by putting in two new implants under the muscle. Ooh. Okay, so first thing that we're gonna do oh, is goodness. go ahead oh, wow. and make incision in the right areola and go down and see what the implant looks like. You have to be really careful because if it's ruptured, it'll come spewing out. <gasps> no, we don't want spewing. Don't say spewing. It's not ruptured. It's not ruptured. It's good, okay. rare. It's so old it could be that all the writing's been worn off it. I couldn't tell how large they were, and they were a little bit gooey, which is evidence of a micro rupture. We've washed out the pocket. Let's look at that breast mass. Once I got inside, I could feel those masses better, and they were quite large, and they needed to come out. Oh, That's another one. What is it? So here are what two little it? breast masses we breast found. Masses. One is in large lymph node for sure. <gasps> the function of the lymph nodes is to do surveillance and to remove toxins and cancers and bad things. You don't want to clog them up. No. So we need to Absolutely not. Nobody wants a cloggy lymph. The muscles were very tight surrounding the implants. So I need to do a careful release to allow them to look like normal breasts and for them to be comfortable with them. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. so we're putting in a new pair of implants. What size? They're not Decades old. I love Janice. Janice is the greatest patient when she's in a chemical coma. What I'm concerned about is once she wakes up, are we gonna meet the happy-go-lucky Janice? Are we gonna meet the ex-addict Janice? I have no idea. They can be one and the same. I'm not sure I like the language in this episode. Must admit that. Right, 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 here we go. Janice is day How one check-in girl. Has she got gate? Just one day out of surgery look incredible. I hear what you're saying. Okay, Janice, let's do some pictures. But, but it's not, it's not computing. Oh How dear. I feel that I should have been left longer at the recovery place. Where, where's your dress? Who took your dressing off? I did. What is this? The drain from my, from my boobs. You took your drain out? Kill me. This is so dangerous, Janice. Oh my God! Well, I'm sorry. So sue me. I asked her. No, not I'm not going to sue you. All but... right, it's not. It's not about you. Well, the problem with this is this is a sterile thing that goes inside. So it's still sterile. No, because this is. Ay, 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 ay. Once you disconnect the tube from the bulb, you've contaminated the entire thing, and bacteria can crawl up the tube into your breast pocket and cause an infection. Did I f up? Uh, I've never had a patient do this before. Are you trying to have a disaster on me? Imagine pulling your own drain out. Imagine. What? <laughs> I am not here for all this. Absolutely not, girls. You're doing things that could turn into a big problem. You didn't tell me not to take it off. Right, that's true. But I also didn't tell you, you know, not to jump out of an airplane, but no. you're not going to do that either. Oh, right? oh my Don't... God, all right, enough. In my 25 years of being a board certified plastic surgeon, Janice is by far the most difficult patient I've ever had. Uh, she, yes, she's she quite a loose cannon. Is her she? breast's worst enemy. I'm going to wrap you up so that 
No matter what you do, you can't touch these incisions anymore. Yes, why? It's not the incisions I, I, I did it on. I did it on... You just touched the incisions in front of me. What, those? Yeah, those. Oh, stop! If you would give Don't me touch it, girl. the pain, doctor, please. You just spent three days in the hospital on IV Dilaudid. Most people t are on aspirin by this point. I don't give a about most people. That's nice for them. You're gonna have to give me something. I'm, I'm serious. I, want, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to feel this bad. The ex attic is coming out, and we've got post-operative pain management problems. I'm kind of at a loss how to deal with her right now. This is it yeah. hurts to blow my nose. It hurts to take a. Sh I mean, a lot of agony. So I want to be prescribed for two or three days the same sh that I had at the hospital. This is classic drug-seeking behavior. So let me tell you why this one hurts more than that one. You know you had those masses up here. The Mass. edamame. I took one of them out. It was like a calcification, like the type you have when you have breast cancer, but it wasn't a breast cancer. <gasps> it will not be a breast cancer. It's just a reaction to the little micro-rupture oh, of silicone. Don't frighten her like okay? that. Okay? Thankfully, they're benign. Well, goodness me. That was a very intense moment there, wasn't it? So... Multiple different problems happening here at the same time. Unfortunately, Janice doesn't seem to get the gravity of the situation. I'm not quite sure why that is, but she doesn't quite understand that, like, the doctors are there to help her. I feel like many of us might have come across someone like that in our lives, where the doctors or the nurses in that situation are there to help them, but they can't see it. They see it as, like, you've done this to me. Whereas it's like, well, no, this is helping the situation. I don't know what that word is, but I've come across a few people like this in my life. Very difficult because it feels like sometimes there's not a way of explaining the gravity of what's happening. And I don't necessarily think that's always the doctor's fault really, because like, if you think of it like making a phone call, you have your phone, you go beep, 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 boop, beep, boop, putting the information in to be sent somewhere. It has to be received in order for it to be understood. And sometimes if someone has a problem with the receiver, there's the issue. She ate. They needed to come out, but they're benign. And it's all gone. So, Thank you. So I have brought you a fresh bra that I'm going to put you in. Is it black? Black surgical bras? Yeah. Me. No. This isn't the Victoria's Secret's lingerie catalog. This is recovery. Get yes. it together. But yes. I mean, you're going to go out? Yeah, I have to work. You're going out tonight? Of course. With drains in place? Yeah. She needs to be seen. She needs to show up. with and... drains and narcotics on board? No, so you couldn't. Rest. Like, if I was feeling as terrible as Janice is saying she is, the last place you would count me is in a club. You had Blood. four and a half hours of reconstructive surgery. Four Can I and talk a half turkey hours. with you for a second? Goodness me, four and a half hours of surgery. That is a lot of surgery to go through. For context, my breast implants were 50 minutes. You're gonna f this up. If you keep acting like this, you're gonna f it up. You're gonna get a complication and you're gonna lose both breast implants. I'm not kidding. What a difficult situation to be in there because unfortunately, what do you say to someone who's not catching the gravity of the situation? Hello, good Abend. Ich heiße Aubergines. Because then on the other hand, if she did lose something or something did go wrong, I wonder if Janice would be the kind of person who would be like, well, it was all his fault. How the f am I gonna hide these drains? What do you need to hide them from? Where are you going? Where's my t-shirt? <laughs> You're not going anywhere, Janice. I have two major fears with Janice. One, that her narcotic use is gonna be out of control and she's gonna be found Ugh. dead in her bed. And two, she's gonna contaminate her wound so much that she develops a breast implant infection. I have to take them out in the middle of the night and she's weirdly gonna blame me for it. Narcissist behavior, isn't it? Oh dear, right, sexy beauty plastic. Aubergines. Right, Janice's day Aww. seven check in girl. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, how are you? I have no recollection of last week at all. Nothing. It, look, whatever I said, however I behaved, I, you know. The good I'm news is, very sorry. Today. It's not me, it was the meds. It just was the meds. I'm sorry, it was the meds. I didn't know if I broke my sobriety. That doesn't but count. I do, it doesn't count because I was under doctor's orders. Well, you had surgery. I mean, yeah. you went through a lot. That was a we big We went wig. through a lot. We went through a lot. What did we do? Well, you were a little bit... Discombobulated. Um, that's a good word. I'll, I'll go with that. Were you breastfed as a child? You know what? I wasn't breastfed. See, Maybe that's, that's why, why I... Fascinated with my... <laughs> I knew it. Well, you know when you're just coming into your own as a kid? Yeah. All I saw were breasts. 
Where? Everywhere. Every girl is just breast just, breast breast. Like, just like a breast freak. So we're really, I became really, a breast freak. Have... I mean, from the swan, we can tell that, can't we? Because he would always be like, go bigger, go bigger, go bigger. Too bad. Get over right, here, okay. big guy. You know what's cool? You had some redness at the end of the procedure, and it got worse over the next few days. Just because of all the surgery I did, it's gone. You are surviving they look great. your discombobulatedness. I have a great doctor. You completely fixed a botched surgery. Yeah, no, it's good. They right, look let's really good. On. Let's put it on. They're dropping flat. When was the last time they looked this good? Seriously. Since good. my ex mother in law fell in the well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will rock right. this. I'm sorry? Since my ex mother in law fell in the well? Wind her up, what's she gonna say next? Bye, sweetie. Bye, sweetie. See you later. Six weeks later Today's at the a really studio, big day girls. For me. I'm shooting my own campaign for a new skincare that I'm launching called The Answer. I'm so excited. <laughs> right, <laughs> the answer is Botox. Well, so you can see for yourself, yeah? Okay, excited. yes. It's really great to have recovered out of this whole experience with Dr. Terry Dubro, to be back on my feet, looking better than ever, feeling better than ever, back on the bike again. Right, so is it like, she's here? House oh of Janice. God. Hello. Oh, Abella. So they do look great, don't they? look very they? nice. I'm gonna have to very, apologize very for well placed. some thoughts about you. They look quite artificial, but I think she wants that look, Mwah. which is fine. I love you so much. Love your <laughs> Before the surgery, my breasts had oh, rippling wow. and they met all the way together that I looked like I had a uniboob. Today, what do you call it? The bread loafing. Perfect. Oh, beautiful. They do look yes. great. Bellissima. Oh. I will be going to the beach and putting on the skippiest bikinis I can get my hot little hands on, and I challenge the paparazzi to take pictures of them and try to find fault in them. I can't wait to get on a pogo stick naked and just bounce up and down. Boy, I, 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 I. My boobs look great. Yeah. <laughs> Should we do a nude? Let's do a nude. Oh, do we Didn't have I? to? I the nude. <laughs> <laughs> Fallopian Yay! tubes on display. Oh my gosh. And that's the end of the episode, my loves. I've got some thoughts. I feel like I've said this a lot recently at the end of these episodes, but what the absolute fuck was that? An interesting adventure into seeing behind the magic of remedying extreme plastic surgery gone wrong. I do like the fact that in this episode, we saw the doctors say no to someone. I feel like just as important as it is to have like plastic surgery, if you're in the situation where you want it, it's also very important to know that there are limits. Like you can't just literally be like, oh my God, whatever I want at any point of the day or night forever. I feel like it is good that we have these barriers in place to protect the patient's well-being. However, I am gonna say, Janice Dickinson is a very interesting person, isn't she? I feel like I've, like, she's just an interesting case study into, like, the world of celebrity, the world of narcotics, and, like, the world of childhood trauma brought forward, and how, if that's unaddressed, it can spiral your life into some very interesting pathways. That's all I'm gonna say on that, my lovelies. I do wanna say it was interesting to see Dr. Dubrow be so honest in this show because we've seen him in previous shows be a lot more dramatic about like, yes, we need to give her the most dramatic results possible. Whereas here, although there were some aspects of unprofessionalism that I really didn't like and didn't gel with, it felt like this was his like remedying, creating problems in previous TV shows. That's my opinion. That's how I feel like it came across. It's him trying to be like, now I'm an expert on the science of beauty. Here are my experts his opinions. Do you know what I mean? Trying to solidify himself as like someone to be well respected with a shady past that we've already seen. Dr. Paul Nassif, I loved, loved hearing the way that he spoke, the way that he almost like gently corrected Dr. Dubrow as well by being like, we're not gonna talk about that now. Let's talk about that later. We've got work to do. I love that attitude. I feel like that's a very clean, calm way of 
collecting a colleague without causing like work drama, if that makes sense. Well, my lovelies, let me know if you want me to cover another episode of Botched here on the Chanel, my loves, because it kind of was a little bit different to what I thought it was going to be. And I have no recollection of ever watching the intros or seeing these like splicey cutaways like that. Wow. Goodness me, my loves. Okay, I'm struggle bussing through reality right here. So I think it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here, my loves. Yes, you can. Also, we've got a bunch of brand new Patreons here, my lovelies. I want to say a massive hello and welcome to Kayla Hurt, Maddie Mad Moomoo, Leanne Rivet, OD, Izzy Enby, Scribbles163, Bill Smith, Alex Ewart Official, Rij Medima, Tash R. Taylor Martin, Manic Pixie Dream Sloth, Riot Breaker, Rye Loves Rory, and Christopher Axeman. Ugh, thank you guys so much for supporting me over on Patreon. It means the absolute world to me and you're ensuring the survival and the thrival of this Chanel. Today's Instagram shout out goes to Ms. Jerry18. Thank you so much for following me over on Instagram. It's Stunning Woman on the Go. If you want to be in with the chance of being featured in my next video's Instagram shout out, make sure you follow me over on Instagram. It is xxluxaria and I post my travel and fashion content over there. Yes. <laughs> and once again, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Orcos Samoji, Ariadia X, Becky Johnson, Beebles32, Shell Herman, Christy Crownover, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Elizabeth Stone, Emily Worsham, Eric Castillo, Finn Dunham, Jen Martin, Caitlin Wright, Larissa Says Relax, Leanne Jones, Les Banana, Min Min Tier, Mariah Sherman, Miss Kiss, Novembrix, Paola Rivera, Ryan Vita, Stefutech, The Chaos Collective, and Vicky Walsh. And you know what, my loves? I think I'm going to leave it on the notes of don't rip your drains out, please. Don't rip your drains out after surgery. No, we're not doing that.